Christmas is one and three. So this game is really important for both teams. So it's, they already did starting lineup. Starting line, lineup for William Christman is number three, Tr Trout. Two, number two, Ross. Number 24, Henderson. Number 11, Montez. Number six, Ogle. Number four, Fish Fisher. Number 10, Woodward. Number 18, Farrell. Number one, Wimberly. And pitching, number 12, Jarvis. For the Liberty North Eagles, number 10, Jack DeGarmo at shortstop. Number three, Douglas Wood at third place. Number 15, Carl Capinto pitching for the Eagles. Number 16, James Perry in center field. 23, Nick Fowler catching. 14, Josh Winkle in left field. Number 12, Kyle Belowski in, on first base. Number five, Logan McCune in right field. And number two, Robbie Hansen on second base. So right now, Liberty North Eagles are on the field as we head into the first inning. You know, Kaylee, I know you've stud softball player of course so oh, thank you you know what can you you know take from playing conference games you know how does that affect you know the way you play does it change strategy at all you know it's just another game well conference games you obviously see each opponent twice one at home one away and so this game for the Eagles they definitely want to get this win at home as this is their first time seeing William Christman this season they want to get that win here so then they go to the field go over there to William Christman next time they already have one up on them I said and just conference play just really sets the tone for the season so it's really important for them to get this win tonight you know that's a really good point you know it just seems like even though the Eagles are technically lower in conference it seems like they don't need any more external motivation to get ready for this game as it's already a conference game you know it's just you should play every game like it's you know the most important game that is absolutely right and then earlier this week the eagles also played north kansas city and as well as way fort osage and we are about to have the first pitch of the game First pitch looks like it is a ball just low outside. Batting for William Christman is Trey Stout, number three. That is a strike, so one and one. Swinging for the fences early. I like the way, you know, have a little tailwind behind him so it could help him get the ball out there. Sit. Ball just high. That it, that count is now two and two. That was a grounder, and that'll be first out for the Eagles. So how is Carl Penta looking tonight on the mound so far in these first four pitches? You know, he's a junior with a really good arm. He looks pretty calm up there. I think if he just works his way into the game, you know, getting nice grounders like that always gives confidence to the pitchers, knowing that he can throw his pitches. You know, just you know, start off with your your bread and butters, and then you can start working your other pitches in there. It really just get your mind into the game. Because that one comes a little, a little high. Starting off with a ball, and up for Christman is number two, Nick Ross. And once again, just a little high, will be a 2 0 count on Ross. Getting a strike on the board. Now count is now two and one. So. Just low, three and one on the count. Acapento looking to get the strike on this next pitch. Picking up the second, making it the count full. See, that, that pitch had a lot more steady tempo. Looks like he took his time, got set up, and then released it as the other ones came in. 
couple high ones, couple low ones. That'll be a hit up the middle to center field, and looks like Ross will take first. Said it's early in the inning and plenty of time to get these out. So next up for the Women Christmas Bears is number 24, Eli Henderson. So Kaylee, on the topic of a little baseball, how about them y'alls this year? Oh, Royals, they are doing pretty dang good. I so said I'm pretty jealous that I have not been able to go to a game. Granted, ticket prices are a little out of my price range, but. Good problem to have though. It's a good problem. So I've definitely been watching them on TV. Yeah, so it's definitely just fun to see our city. You know, that is really kind of ball gets away, space. but Ross does not take the next base. And North bringing out some new uniforms, the American flag style uniforms, a little navy on it, a little red and white, blue. Looks good. Excellent. That is going deep to left field, and that is gone. That is a home run to start off in the first inning. Man, that wind is blowing tonight, and that ball just soared over left field. So that, that was Eli Henderson for the Wilkinson Bears Eli score. Henderson, great strike right there. Strike up on the ball, excuse me. And, you know, it definitely had a little wind at her. It kind of looked like he popped it up a little bit. That ball just never seemed to lower down after it went up. And, you know, that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, the hitters the hitters know that. They can feel it. They're going to be swinging for the fences all night. So yeah, with that wind blowing the way it is, those balls are going to just keep moving if they're up in that air. So outfield's playing pretty deep. So try and compensate for the wind, but Lumpkins and Bears get a lead 2-0 in the game. We are going to take another look at that hit said by Eli Henderson here. Said takes it and easily over the left field fence. Said not even close. Said yeah, fan yeah, just kind of left it hanging in there. Right, the sweet spot. And Henderson just you know took care of it. He sent that thing yard. He did. <laughs> said <laughs> the count now on number eleven, Damon Montez is one. be a ground ball to shortstop Jack DeGarmo and gets the out at first for the third out of the inning. Nice little scoop and throw there by DeGarmo. <laughs> Getting the out, changing size. See if the Eagles can put a couple on the board after that two run homer there early in the first. How do you how do you bounce back from something like that? You know, what what does St coach Steagle have to t tell his team, you know, a quick two runs like that? They can't be good on the confidence. Uh, definitely never good to get let them get up 2-0 in the first inning, but granted there's a lot of game left, so the Eagles just have to take advantage of their at-bats, and I mean, hopefully they has, they'll have the same win advantage just as the William Christman Bears, so if they take advantage of it, then we should be seeing success with them as well. I like it. I like, I like the patience that... So, I like the way you're giving them patience, you know, and just work your way into the game and... Yeah, it's early in the game. They got plenty of time to make a move back. Absolutely, still very early, and both teams have that win, so both teams can swing for the fences. Absolutely, and so on the mound for William Christman is number 12, Josh Jarvis, said he will be one to watch this inning, see how his pitching looks this game. Yeah, Jarvis, you know, watched him through the last couple of games. Has an arsenal of pitches up his sleeve, and he could pull them out at any time. And it'll be a challenge for the Liberty North hitters to, to 
find that spot to get in their zone. And Sam, I'm going to be interested to see how Liberty North handles William Christman this year. As last year when they faced them, the Eagles won both times, first winning 5-1 and one, and then once again winning 8-1 and one last season. So not sure how William Christman has. I didn't know how many seniors they had graduate. But if they were a pretty similar team, then Liberty North should be used to seeing them and should be able to do something tonight. That's a great point you bring up because our Liberty North team actually lost a good amount of seniors and a lot of that actually went on to play in college. Highlighted by Brian Sharp who plays currently at the University of Missouri. And he got uh, was that ath freshman athlete of the week not long ago. Yeah, he was awarded the name the SEC freshman of the week back in the beginning of March. So. Uh, so the Eagles obviously have to compensate for the loss of their seniors, doing it well so far with a decent conference record, trying to improve tonight. And now up for the Eagles is number 10, Jack DeGarmo, and that is a strike on the first pitch. Low outside. Nice eyes there by DeGarmo, just being patient. Saw the ball was going outside, just took a step back. So making the catcher work early, number Farrell. You would know, Kaylee, as you were the catcher. I am a catcher, so I t t sympathize for all catchers that are back there behind the plate. <laughs> Said it is a fun and rewarding job, but. That position has to get a little uncomfortable, though. Bad knees. Yes, it does play a toll on your knees. I've definitely experienced that. Said, and that's going to be a foul ball Garmo off the dugout. So. Pulls it pretty hard towards the dugout. Got good contact though, it sounded pretty solid. So, a little quick with the hands. Two and two the count. Two and one, excuse me. Come on, Kaylee. Sets. Looks like that he's going to call it outside. So DeGarmo is good now, the count being three and two. DeGarmo pops it up to second base, and that will be it. First out for the Eagles. Now, next up for the Liberty North Eagles is number three. Douglas Wood. Wood looking to get something going for the Eagles here in the bottom of the first. First pitch just high. Once again, too high up there. So that'll be a 2 0 count on Wood. And that'll be a hit in the short left field. And that is caught by Christman's number two, Nick Ross. That'll be the second out of the inning for the Liberty North Eagles. Next up to bat is going to be number 15, pitcher Carl Capento. Maybe the, the wind's getting into the Eagles' heads a little bit as they're swinging pretty hard. Maybe they should just try to control it, get good contact, and let the wind take it itself. Said, swinging for the fences after William Christman got their first home run in the first inning. Oh, it's definitely in the back of their head a little bit, knowing they have a little, a little ground game. Calling at time, taking too long to pitch the ball. Set. Looks like it's going to call that 
call that a ball. Fans are not too happy about that, thinking that should have been a strike. But that'll be a foul ball off the first base dugout. Count now being one and two for the number 15. And Carl Acapento caught on the changeup. So that'll be the third out for the Liver North Eagles. And we would just like to take the time to thank North Nation Sports Game of the Week is brought to you by Hawthorne Bank, serving communities all over the Northland and in Liberty at Five Victory Lane. As well, North Nation Sports Network is proud to partner with the Eagle Club. Parents, if you're looking to get involved at Liberty North, the Eagle Club offers many opportunities. Thank you to both Hawthorne Bank and the Eagle Club for helping us produce this Game of the Week. So, Alex, after that first inning, looking at both Eagles, William Christman, what do you think both teams need to be doing coming into the second inning? You know, from for the Eagles, I think the most prominent thing would be patience. You know, it seemed like they kind of rushed at bats, you know, swinging at ones they shouldn't swing. And it kind of got in their head a little bit as they let a couple easy ones go by. But, you know, obviously it has to be in their head a little bit too down, you know, for after the first inning. So that's something they just need to keep in the back of their mind, you know, just let the game come to them. Let Just work yourself into the game. No need to force anything, you know. For, for the Crispin Bears, you know, just keep your foot on the pedal. I mean, if the game plan gives you two runs after the first inning and a nice three outs, nobody on base, I don't think she changed anything or That's just right. let, let the, you know, let the game. All right, and now up for William Christman is number four, Will Fisher. Say count being one and one. A ball low in the dirt, nice block by number 23, Nick Fuller. Beautiful block indeed. And that'll be a nice grounder up the middle. Ooh, fumble that short stop, and looks like Fisher will be taking first base. Looks like an unfortunate infield error there by DeGarmo. That's it. Possibly costing them a base. And Eagles now hopefully looking to turn a double play here as number 10, Tyler Woodward, is up to bat. High pitch inside. Looks like it, it hits him. And he will take first base. Said not a strong start for the second inning here. Yeah, the Eagles may be... Just a little, a little antsy right now, you know, just a couple of these, you know, routine things, you know, high pitches, things like that, getting away from leading two bears on, on the base. So, yeah, Alcamando definitely just needs to get ready to come out of this next batter, which is number 18, Jacob Farrell. So, runners now on first and second base for the Willem Christmas Bears, so... Eagles should be looking to get a force out at three. Looks like 18 is going to be going for the bunt. But we'll <coughs> back. Our team is out. Interesting tactic there from the Bears. Catching the Eagles a little off guard possible. So let's see, and going again once again, gets the bunt down to the pitcher, and they are gonna get the out at first. Small, little small ball play there, just getting somebody in scoring position there. So 
did a great bunt by number 18. So now up to bat, we'll need number one, Sam Wimberly for the Locust and Bears. One out on the inning, so base hit should score a run here. Yeah, it's just good, good strategy there by the Bears, you know, realizing, hey, we've got a couple of people on base, might as well run the score a little bit. So that'll be a strike, strike on number one. And once again, there's another one. So making the count 0 and 2. Gain it on him early. Pitching high, smart move on Occupento's part, trying to get him to swing at junk. Is there nine innings in the Sam Wimberly. And that's what the Eagles like to see from their starting pitcher, but Carl Acapena. Said so one Christian Bears got through their lineup quick, making it back up to the top with number three, Trey Stout, hitting the top of their lineup with two outs and four runners on second and third base. So, I'll be a first pitch strike. Pitch, making it an 0-2 count. I said Ocupeno trying to get this third out for the Eagles, not letting these runs to come across. <laughs> Foul ball by number three. Once again, another foul ball off the first base side. <laughs> Number three, Stout, fouling off lots of pitches here. Trying to find the right one, because do not want to leave these runners out on the field. Especially after North made a few errors there. And once again, hit by pitch on number three as a second batter. Acapento's hit, making the bases loaded. What do you think is going on in his head right now? You know, it just has to be very frustrating. You know, he had a good pitch count going, and just to give it away, you know, just to let him have a freebie, if you will, on the base, he just has to anger you yourself a little bit, you know? Definitely. I said I'm not a pitcher, but I know when my pitchers hit batters, it definitely plays a toll in their head, especially hitting two in a row. So he's coming at number two, Nick Ross, right now. It looks like we 
a short little grounder, but go foul just up the third base line. Number two, hit to right field foul, but that would be caught by first baseman Kabalowski. That would make the third out for the Eagles going into the bottom of the second. The Eagles got themselves out of jail there. You know, bases loaded with this win and the way that the Christian Bears are hitting the ball. Anything could have happened there, Kaylee. <laughs> definitely. It said Eagles definitely got out of a tight one there with bases loaded. You know, Eagles have only seen the play once, but it was very unsuccessful. Do you change something this early in the game, or do you just say, hey, let's work our way into it? I think you just keep working at it. I mean, said it's obviously early in the game, and so, I mean, eventually, I mean, hits are going to fall. They're going to start making errors, and so things start going either team's way. So I think that it's too early in the game to start changing things up yet. I like that. I, I agree with that. I, I'd say, you know, stick to your game plan. It's been working decently successful this, successfully this year. So just stick to the way you know how to play and grind it out. Absolutely. Said. And then for the Eagles, number 16, James Perry, it will be leading off the bottom of the second. Said. And the Bears still lead 2 0. You see a lot of these multi-sport athletes out here, a lot of the kids from the basketball team transitioning over to the baseball field, you know. You know, went pretty deep in the basketball season. You know, that has to have some sort of effect on, you know, starting to, to baseball, you know, switching sports like that. So it definitely does. I mean, coming from, I switch, switching know, between course. seasons. Yeah, of course. of course. I mean, it definitely is hard, but I mean, you're obviously in shape from the previous sport, hopefully. So it definitely helps. the carryover of your athleticism and then. Uh, Golden Eagle over here next to me, feeling pretty special. Welcome. Yes, that was back in my golden days. <laughs> so, and James Perry's going to foul one off to the backstop. Are you playing soft on the phone? No, it's okay. I was going to ask. I didn't think. No. Oh. Kelly, how does it, you know, what does it mean, you know, for seniors, you know, how does it just feel, you know, to know this is your last season out here with the team, you know? So, just, you know, is, is, do you just play more relaxed because you know this is it and you just have more fun? So it's a little bit of everything. I said you definitely want to perform well your last season and you want to leave the team on a good note. I mean, you want to go as far as you can because it is your last chance to go that far. Very so true. there is a little added pressure, but if you just go out and play your game, you'll be good. And here, I mean, obviously, Liberty North, they have a few seniors, Jack DeGarmo, Josh Winkle, Cal Blowski, Logan McCune. But they also are full of some young talent. So and that will be a foul ball out over the fence. So Perry still hanging good with a 3 2 count, battling it off. You could just see how deep that ball goes, even when it's just a nice little pop-up fly ball. So yeah, the wind win. is blowing out to right field, so anything hit that way is going to be carried. And line drive to third base win, number 10, Tyler Woodward. So that'll be the first out for the Eagles. Nice hard hit, but just right at him. Some cat-like reflexes if I've ever seen one, Kaylee. <laughs> so, Reacting very well. Catching the ball, securing that out. So yeah, third base. If, when you're on the corner, is third base, first base. You gotta be able to react quick, even the pitcher too, because those balls will come at you fast if you're not ready for them. So now, next up for the Eagles, number 23, Nick Fuller. 
That'll be a first pitch strike. And that'll be a nice hard hit right down the first baseline to the coach. So the count now 0-2 on Fuller. So gonna have to battle here as Jarvis is gonna be throwing him some junk. <laughs> it's funny, funny bit of names there, Kaylee. Always full of jokes. Thanks. Ball low in the dirt, making the count two and two. That'll be a hit deep into center field, and that is caught by number 24, Eli Henderson. So that'll be a second out for the Liberty North Eagles. And next up will be number 14, Josh Winkle. Eagles have still failed to get on base, I believe. Still working the way up there, trying to find that hit. That was actually a pretty solid hit. Just unfortunate it didn't carry. The last couple yards took the, the long route center field there. So yeah, nice solid hit by Nick Fuller. But things so hopefully soon will be dropping for the Eagles, getting on base, get something going, and maybe Winkle will start that rally for him. That'll be a ball low outside, making the count 2-0. First strike against Winkle, two and one count. Said three and one count. And that'll be a nice solid hit up to center field and the Eagles will get their first runner on base. Said. That's how you do it right there, just right. Nice little grounder guy at the middle. Put him on base. So uh, Miller is two outs for Liberty North Eagles, but next up will be number 12, Cal Belowski. Cal Belowski bringing that senior experience to the table. Always helps to recall back times where we play good other games. One of the few seniors on the Eagles squad this year. So, and now we're going to take another look at that last hit by Josh Winkle here. Said he had a, a nice line drive right there up the middle, center field. So, great hit, great start for the Eagles. And now back in the game, and Kabalowski grounded out to second base, making third out for the Eagles. So the Eagles still trailed 0-2 at the bottom after the second inning. There it is, Kaylee. Eagles did gain some confidence, though, getting a couple nice hits out there. So definitely got some better hits in the first inning, so making progress, and hopefully they'll come back this next time around and get a rally going. Absolutely. Is Acapeno still out there on the mound for the Eagles? Said, and then we were 
talking about seniors earlier on, and I know there's quite a few seniors who are actually planning on going to play at the next level next year. Um, so I know a few of those include um, Jake Barchi, who's planning on going to Missouri Western. Um, we have Cole Gakey, who's a Kansas City, Kansas Community College commit, and Jack DeGarmo, who will be going down to Rolla, Missouri S&T, next year as well. So now batting for the Bears will be number 24, Eli Henderson. Eli Henderson got the home run in the first inning. So definitely got to be selective on the pitches um, as the first pitch is down low in the dirt. And that will be a foul ball at the first base side. <laughs> so count now one and one. So Alcapento looking to come at Henderson, not wanting him to get another good hit like the first inning. So it looked like a nice pitch there, but low and will be a ball. Nice hit up the middle to shortstop. Jack DeGarmo fields, goes across, and gets him out at first. Nice play by DeGarmo. So that was an, an Eli was very quick up the line, but Jack DeGarmo was very quick on the throw and got the first out for the Eagles in top of the third. So next up for the William Christmas Bears will be number 11, Damon Montes, the designated hitter. And we are going to look at that hit. Once again, <laughs> nice pitch. Eli Henderson grounds out the shortstop. Jack DeGarmo goes back and gets it, throws it, and close play, but just gets him. <laughs> so now that was Damon Montez got a hit on first base now, and now up to bat is number six, Grady Ogle. So that was a high hit ball, and I'll go foul on the first base side. And that would be a ball low outside, so making the count one and one. So there is one out on the inning. So trying to pick him off at first base. And once again, looked like he got him to me, but who will be called safe? Eli Henderson getting off the first base a little too far for Acapento. And hit him a dead ball. but it'll be called a ball. So the count now is two and one on Ogle. Fans not too happy about that call. And try to get him again, but Henderson 
You're getting back just in time. Two and one here. And he is going a second, and the ball gets away from catcher Nick Fuller, and so Henderson's going to take second base. And we've seen that a couple of times already today, Kaylee. Acapena with the high pitch and close to the batter. Yeah, I said he has hit a couple batters this game so far, and he is trying to find a rhythm again after kind of missing all over the place. Said so, so the Bears get a runner on second base with one out in the top of the third. And that is a walk on number six, Grady Oval. So there is going to be a timeout on the field. Coach goes out to talk to Acapinto. Wonder if he's going to keep him out there or bring someone else in. What do you think? You know, I don't know if you should pull him out already this early. Um, if this is a poor pitching performance, he only has two runs. And, you know, I think the Eagles have a good enough defense where you can keep him in to work him in there, you know, keep him in the game a little longer, get, get through a couple more innings. He's confident in what he's doing, though. I'd say keep him in. And that looks like that's exactly what their eagle, Eagles are going to be doing. It is definitely a windy one out here as all our papers are flying around everywhere and trying to keep the wind out of our mics. And that looks going to be a ball low on number four, Will Fisher for the William Christman Bears. A nice hit just past third base, tips off the glove, and they are going to score number 11, Will Henderson, and Fisher takes second, and now Grady Ogle's in a pickle, and they get him out. Robbie Hanson with the chase down there on the little pickle. Nice play by Eagles, but Henderson does advance to second base. Uh, and now there's going to be two outs in the top of the third. William Wilson Bears did score a run, taking the lead 3-0 and against the Eagles. So next up now will be number 10, Tyler Woodward. You know, the Bears show continuously that they're swinging it well tonight. They're hitting, they're hitting the ball well, and they're, they're getting some runs in, you know, 3-0 already. So they're definitely taking chances there, to trying to advance bases and getting in rundowns, forcing the Eagles to either make a play or make a mistake, hopefully. <laughs> and the Eagles were able to make a play that time. It was a good coaching call there for Chrisman. Nice pitch by number 15, so making the count 0-2. Oh so Acapeno looks like he's kind of getting a ry rhythm here now after Coach came out and talked to him. So we'll see if he can finish this at bat. And that's going to be a nice hit up the right center field all the way, rolling to the fence, and that is going to score number four, Will Fisher, and that will be a double for Tyler Woodward. Said nice hit. And j just right in between uh, James Perry and Logan McCune. So. Now for the Eagles advancing. It would not be a terrible idea maybe to switch pitchers now as the score seems to keep running up a little bit. You don't want to get too far away from you. They are, it is running up. I mean, it's 4-0 on top of the third. I mean, the Bears have got six hits off him compared to the Eagles one. So potentially looking into the next inning, they might be looking to switch up pitchers here. But Acapena is trying to go up in number 18, Jacob Farrell, and he's going to 
Good hit, but it's going to be a foul off the right base side. What's your favorite snack from QT? Oh, you're on cough, bro. Oh, I don't know. Like off the little hot roller thingy. The steak and cheese. Is that good? Is that good? Who's bringing you food? Nothing much. Yeah, we can. What's up? And did he go? And they're going to call it. So that's going to be a third out for the top of the third inning. So Liberty North Eagles finally get going to the bottom of the third. So if you were the William Christman Bears, Alec, let's say, and having six hits versus the Eagles one, how do you think they're feeling right now? Um you know, a little anxious, you know. Four down, one we've only had one person advance to base, you know. You have to be thinking, I gotta start hitting hitting the ball more. As a team, as a player, we have to start focusing more at our at bats, having a little more successful trips to the plate. I feel a little worried too the way that Crispin's hitting the ball. I mean, six hits off your starting pitcher in the third inning isn't something you really would expect or want. So, you know, they're going to have to change the game plan up a little bit. Definitely, and hopefully they can get the change of momentum here in the third as they have a number five, Logan McCune, leading them off. This Started off with a ball. Another senior here for the Eagles, bringing that senior experience here. Now, Kaylee, speaking about seniors, have you uh, felt a little, felt a little bit of senioritis at all? Definitely, have been starting to feel some senioritis. I um, mean, we got 17 school days left, so uh, that is super excited. I know you definitely have had some senioritis, Alex. I've witnessed that. You know, I was fortunate enough to know where I was going next year about August. Fortunate enough to know. Unfortunately, I probably caught senior ice around August. Said, and speaking of that, Alex, you're going to be going to William Jewell next year to play soccer. I am. So yeah, I am very excited. Um, looking forward to getting back into the groove of things with you know, I'm used to it my whole life, a little bit of school, a little bit of soccer, good time. Um, so, Got to continue that into college, so. Absolutely, you know, um, absolutely. It just, it helps get through the school. Um, and staying close to home, so still be catching these Liberty North games. Staying local, uh, yeah, definitely planning on being around North a little bit, helping around possibly with our broadcast program and um, soccer team as well, golf team, you know, maybe I can do a little bit of everything, I don't know. So it might be a little busy in college, but we'll see. So now it looks like they're starting back up, and that's going to be a high pitch. So it's going to be 3-0 against Logan McCune. <laughs> Having to get a strike on that. So it's sometimes those are the best pitches to hit because you know they're <laughs> going to be coming. Logan McCune hits one high to left field, and that is uh, caught by uh, left fielder Will Fisher. So nice hit for the Eagles, but once again, still not getting on base. So the luck is not in the Eagles' favor, favor right now. 
So next up for the Eagles is number two, Robbie Hansen. Said Robbie's had a nice path paved for him with his two older brothers, both playing on the baseball team. Both pretty solid ball players too, as well. Mm -hmm. Jake and Kale. Um, <laughs> Solid at every sport they've solid played. athletes all athletes around. Yeah. Said between basketball and baseball, I said they've definitely been through Living North and left a legacy here. And Hanson's going to get a hit, the shortstop, and is he going? To, just can't beat it out. So that's going to be the second out for the Eagles. Good play there by the shortstop. Can't can't be too bad when you have a ground, a hard grounder there for Robbie Hanson. So now it looks like the Eagles are going to get back to the top of their lineup with number 10, Jack DeGarmo. So hopefully ever, all the Eagles have seen Jarvis now. So hopefully they can adjust and get a hit this time. Okay. Missouri S&T commit Jack DeGarmo uh, bringing some solid experience to the team here tonight. So hopefully can spark something here at his third at bat. <laughs> Definitely, he'll be heading down to Rolla next year, which is actually where my brother goes to school as well. Not for sports, but so definitely I love that school and love that campus. I'm surprised he was a stud soccer player. Said, <laughs> so, yep, he left that in high school though. <laughs> Retired early. Retired. Good so, now, though. glad he's enjoying it down there in Rolla. So. Good engineering school here. That is a very good engineering school, and that looks Jack DeGarmo is going to get a walk and get on base for the Eagles. Said, I believe that's the first walk this game for Jarvis, so he's been pitching a pretty solid game so far. And Switch it up a little bit. You know, they get a couple walks now. So, yeah, that definitely would be a nice. And then also we just saw um, – James Perry warming up in bullpen, so maybe they're looking to put him in next inning, so we'll see. A lot of young players here on the Eagles squad looking good for the future team, but focus on tonight's game, of course. As the count is now zero and one. What it. Ow. Trying to pick the Garmo off on first, but won't be able to do it. So Jack DeGarmo also up this week for prom court, as well as you, Alex Trinidad. So that is exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and our and our wonderful director in the truck, Sarah Philpot. Sarah Gilpot up for prom queen. That's what I'm talking about. So that'll be exciting. We're having prom, and that is a nice hit at the left. At the left field, and DeGarmo's gonna stay on second. Nice hit by Douglas Wood, number three. So this might be a little spark the Eagles are needing to get some runs here. So now up for the Eagles is pitcher number 15, Carl Acapento. A couple good hits here already for Wood. As he hit a good one earlier, it just got caught pretty deep. But swinging the bat very well tonight. That'll be a foul ball off the third base dugout. Low in the dirt and DeGarmo is going to take third and great read by number 10. Taking that extra base and taking advantage of that low ball. So, so now we have runners in scoring position here. So 15, looking to bring them home. And nice hit, it's gonna go deep, is it? No, just inside the fence, but it's gonna go all the way. Scoring both to Garmo and Wood and giving Acapento a double. So that is making the score now two and four. Eagles only trailing by two runs now in the bottom of the third. And that's what the Eagles are looking for. Nice hit there by Acapento, sending in two runners right back in the game. You know, so yeah, that was right a, back in it. Right back in it. And, uh, 
right before that, having the DeGarmo take that extra base, put them both in scoring position, giving them that run. So little plays like that that will get the Eagles back in this game. Agreed. Well said, Kaylee. Our own KNET baseball analyst, Kaylee Knudsen. Always all about the numbers. Said, so, and speaking of numbers, number 16, James Perry is up to bat. Also the queen of smooth transitions there. I like that one. Thank you. Take that. Said, take that. Nice little hit. <laughs> it's going back and forth now. <laughs> so that will be an 0 and one count against Perry. Said... Definitely don't want to leave Agapeno stranded out there on second base. Hopefully Perry can come through and move him around. As the Eagles have a little momentum here in the bottom of the third. Wait till they switch angles. That's gonna be a ball, making it a one-one. A nice hit by Perry, going deep, and it is just inside, off the fence. So that will score 15 Agapeno, and Perry will trade places, landing himself on second base. Two great hits in a row, Alex. What's going on? Crazy events happening here in the bottom of the third inning right now. Liberty North Eagles put up a quick three runs right back in the game. I think the momentum has shifted here, Kaylee. I uh, would like to say so. I mean, the Bears obviously feeling it, calling a timeout on the field. Coach coming out to pull in the whole infield in on this one. So that's all that happened. And then game of baseball, a couple great hits can definitely change the game. Yeah, Eagles so. staying with their game plan, just sticking with it. Getting a couple good runs up there and right back in the game, putting the pressure on the Bears to either switch pitching or hopefully conjure up some early acts of the first couple innings from the mound. But as of now, the Eagles have some good confidence so, the rest of the game. Well, and it looks like the Bears are going to be switching up their pitchers here. They're putting in number eight, Parker LaRoche. Said LaRoche is how you LaRouche, actually LaRoche, I apologize. that last name, Kaylee. It's okay. You can't be great at everything. I cannot. I said definitely have my ears, Alex. <laughs> said, but said, I, going in the beginning of this game, I would not think the Bears would have switched up their pitchers before the Eagles. <laughs> but Yeah, the Bears were pitching hot. <laughs> had before this inning, Eagles only had one runner on base correct, so he was steady going. A couple of hiccups here and there, and the game's momentum has switched completely. So, I mean, this has been a two-out rally. I mean, starting with two outs, and then Jack DeGarmo back at the top getting that walk and scoring the first run for the game. It's a loss in So, you can have one of my sticks. Yeah. I got you. Thank you. I had to smash those. The deal. So, now up to a bat for the Eagles will be number three. 23, excuse me, and Nick Fuller said, and James Perry out there on second base. Two outs in the bottom of third. Said the Bears just switching up their pitchers, putting in number eight. And he is going. Perry advancing to third base on a pass ball.
foul ball. <laughs> Making the count one and one against Fuller. So the Eagles now having to adjust the new pitcher in. Going full bore for that one. Said. Eagles can swing a little more freely now that they have a couple runs on the board. Said. No comfort back there. So definitely, but having to adjust to the Eagles now. And that'll be a hit out to left field coming in, and that'll be the third out of the inning as we head into the top of the fourth. And now North Nation Sports Game of the Week is brought to you by Hawthorne Bank, serving communities all over the Northland and in Liberty at Five Victory Lane. So thank you to Hawthorne Bank. And also North Nation Sports Network is proud to partner with the Eagle Club. Parents, if you're looking to get involved at Liberty North, the Eagle Club offers many opportunities. So thank you to both Hawthorne Bank and the Eagle Club. So as we head into the top of the fourth, the Eagles are trailing 3-4 against the William Christmas Bears. So having a good third inning here, having lots of great hits. Yeah, um, Eagles right back in the game, you know, down, down one still, but Momentum has to be shifted towards their way. You know, they're hitting. They just hit it really well. And it looks like the Eagles are going to keep in Acapinto. So, <laughs> going to give him our shot. Hopefully, can come back and keep this momentum moving in their direction. He's having fun. Yeah, they will. Say again, I'm sorry. Just chilling. So, leading off for the William Christman Bears will be number one, Sam Wimberly, right fielder. The Bears at the bottom of their lineup, about to turn it to the top. So, it's starting off with a ball, 1 0 count. Cameras. So a nice hit up the middle and it's going to get through to center fielder and that's going to be fielded by James Perry. So Sam Wimberly taking first base. Next up for the Bears, number three, Trey Stout, top of their lineup coming through. And they just picked him off at first base, gonna call him out, getting the first out for the Eagles. Said. <laughs> so, fantastic play there, getting that out, keeping that momentum moving the Eagles' direction. Nothing. Uh, swing and a miss by uh, number three, making the count one and one. Eagles electing to stay with Acapeno on the mound, having confidence in their starting pitcher, which is always a good sign. You know, maybe Siegel had a quick talk with them. It's definitely had some success this inning. Looking good, making the count one and two count against Stout. Just. Just outside, two and two. <laughs> Strike three, called against Stout, making the second out of the inning for the Eagles. First to pick off, and now a third strike watching. as number two, Nick Ross, is up to bat. 
Going for the same pitch, getting a ball this time. Count now is a one and one. Swing and a miss by number two. Swing, bada bada, and a miss. So, and a miss. So. Acapeno seems to be pitching a little more focused on the mound. Working the ball a little better. Making the count two in two against Ross. And I'll be a ground out, fielded by third baseman Douglas Ward. Gets him out at first, and Eagles have the momentum going to the bottom here of the fourth. Great three plays, great inning. Now let's see if they can keep it going. You looking at me? Because I'm not saying anything. I don't, say, I don't know baseball at all. I know, like, the bases. Absolutely, Kaylee. Eagles seem to have a little chip on their shoulder, you know, going down four runs on their home pitch. It's not what you want to do in front of your home fans. Said, and uh, looks like they're gonna put Parker LaRouche back out on the mound. He is a junior for the William Christman Bears. the Eagles looking to pull back to either tie or take the lead this inning as we are about at the midway stretch of the game. Said the sun is going down, the wind is picking up, and it is getting chilly out here. People breaking out the blankets and the hoods and trying to get out of the wind. So now it is a ball for number 14, Josh Winkle, who's leading off the Liberty North Eagles. Once again, a 2-0 count. So the Eagles seem to be in LaRouche's head right now. So as they will call a quick timeout right at the beginning of the inning. So what do you think about um, our broad, you know, some of our broadcast students, Miss Higgins, traveling down to LA for the week? So it's pretty yeah, nice, a little better weather than this. We have a bunch of students who got to go up to LA for a national broadcasting convention up there, and mm -hmm. they are in some nice weather. I know they're competing at different events, going to different competitions, representing our program up there so we are definitely jealous of them giving them a shout out if they are watching That's and true. doing this for you Higgs and they also toured the University of Southern California a little SoCal, SoCal action going on really did not know that I was informed that they got stuck in LA traffic yesterday on a city bus for about two hours so not pleasant, not pleasant but fun and speaking of which that looks like number 14 Josh Winkle will get a walk to start off the inning so now to bat wing number 12 Kyle Bulowski in the dirt and Winkle will advance to second base as the ball gets all the way back to the backstop. Instead. The, the airs kind of switched back and forth with the teams. It kind of seems like if one team's 
making mistakes the other team's not and this is an exciting game to watch it's uh, definitely getting exciting and that is going to be a ground ball to first base coach <laughs> nice chopper down the line for Velowski. good swing at it Nice hit, deep center field, and that's gonna be caught by number 24, Eli Henderson, and then a hold up Winkle on second base. So that'll be the first out for the Eagles here in the bottom of the fourth. Good rip there by Cal Veloski though. Sent it at deep center field. It was a good tracking there by the center, number 24, for the Bears. You know, keep getting more confidence at bat, you know, hitting the ball well like that. It's just going to benefit your team down the road, especially as we come closer to the end of the game. Definitely. I'll be a foul ball by number five, Logan McCune, who is up to bat for the Eagles. Logan McCune was a part of the city winning intramural 3v3 team that we had this winter. Just throwing it out there. The Ellen Rejects, very quality team. So that he will ground ball a shortstop, error on number two's part. Uh, so it's gonna score number 14, Josh Winkle to tie up the game. We're all Logan, tied up, folks. We are tied, all tied up. up. Said so Logan McCune holding up on first base. That air definitely hurt the It's four to four. The Bears. Bottom of the fourth. That allowed Winkle to go second to home. Great read by the Eagles. So now up to bat will be number two, Robbie Hansen. So Bears looking to pick off Logan McCune all in first base. I think our torpedoes are here for heaters. I think they're parking right now. Oh. low ball in the dirt. I definitely take up. They make fun of me for these pants all the time because I wear my golf and they saw me golfing. So, so I gotta take them off. They straight flame me. You can wear them. I know you're cold. I don't want to wear them. They're ugly. They're ugly. <laughs> Making the 3-0 count against Hansen. Looking to take this next pitch and once again try to pick off McCune on first. <laughs> and they're gonna call that a strike. So that's gonna be a three and one count against Hansen. Three and one count with Robbie Hansen. Bottom of the fourth one out. Viewers who just now started watching. The Eagles were down zero to four not long ago. Seems like that momentum has shifted and the Eagles keep running away with it. Well, It'll end up being a good game. Yeah, bottom of the third. The Eagles got a few hit, got a walk, got a couple of hits, got an air and got it three and four and then just off an air tied the game up. So now that is a hit to second base, gets through to right field, and McCune's going to hold up at second. Fantastic hit by Robbie Hansen, advancing bases. So the Eagles now are going to go to the top of their lineup with number 10, Jack DeGarmo, up to bat. So the Bears looking to recoup here as they've made a few errors on the middle infield, which have allowed the Eagles it, to get on base. Is it possible they're thinking of another pitching change, possibly? I believe it's possible. I don't see anyone over there in their bullpen, though. So, looks like they're gonna hold them, 
hold him in there for now at least. Here for the said it's not necessarily the pitching. That just came in for the Bears. Said not necessarily a pitching problem. Said there's been a few errors on the field which have contributed. So Jack DeGarma once again gets a hit all the way left field holding up McCune at third base. Bases loaded for the Eagles here in the bottom of the fourth. So next up for the Eagles will be number three, Douglas Wood. There's our feeder. Dude, they brought that blanket for me on dude. That's actually my blanket too. Yeah, they got it from like what was that? Honestly, I think it was something like that. Said I'm questioning, are the Bears thinking of a new pitching change? Uh, it uh, looks like they are because number 10, Tyler Woodward, is going to be taking the mound. This will be the third pitcher for the Eagles. Or not for the Bears, excuse me. So... Once again, the Eagles are going to have to adjust to a new pitcher. But they saw success last time that happened, so hopefully they can turn that around and keep the rally going. Said so only having one out here in the bottom of the fourth, tied up four and four. That I believe the Bears are definitely starting to get a little worried here. Granted, it is tied up, but the Eagles are adjusting really quick to their pitchers, getting some good hits, getting a few errors on their part. And now we have two bases loaded, so runners in scoring position. And let's see if number three, Douglas Wood, can capitalize on that. Some fans are definitely not happy right now, yelling. But now it's going to be a 1-0 count against number three, Douglas Wood. Now a 3-0 count against Wood. Needing a strike here, and uh, he's gonna get it. So three and one count now. Bases loaded. Definitely pressure on a pitcher coming into a game at this time. Said so low in the dirt. He's going to get walked as the leading run comes across home. The Eagles now take the lead. Five to four. 
Oh. Eagles take the lead. This is insane, Kaylee. Is insane. So once again, the bases stay loaded with only one out, and we have 15. Carl Acapinto up to bat. And that's going to be a hit to deep right field on the catch. But Eagles will advance. And they are going to send a Garmo first. And he scores moving. Acapinto to or Douglas Wood to second base. Excuse me. So the Eagles now take the lead at 7 2 4. Fantastic sacrifice fly by Carl Acapinto. Yes, indeed, Kaylee. Nice sack fly there to advance a couple more Eagles. Now have a three point lead, three round lead here. The bottom of the Crazy. fourth. You know, the Eagles were very cold the first couple innings, and now red hot. I'm talking straight off the oven, out of the oven hot. Just like your quick trip food right now? Just like this nice little steak. Fajita, taquito, whatever they're called. And I gave you one as well, so don't complain. Thank you, Alex. You gotta finish short so you can talk while I eat. And that's gonna be a high pitch on number 16, James Perry, up to bat with two outs and a 2-0 count. James Perry had a nice Solid hit earlier that went to center field. Unfortunately, got caught, but he is obviously swinging the bat well. Swung hard there. I mean, he was trying to break the cover off that ball. He almost walked out of his shoes there. Bottom of the fourth, two outs here. Eagles lead seven to four. Foul tip there. Two strikes for Perry. Ball going towards center field again, and the Bears will walk to their dugout after not having the best inning there. Seven to four now, letting in seven runs in the past couple innings. Now it's it's kind of hard mentally, you know, to to take that in. You know, they had a nice lead, you know, probably maybe got a little too comfortable, a little lackadaisical. And now they have to fight back into the game. Here is Acapeno stays on the mound for the Eagles. Smart choice, seems like he's playing a lot better as Kaylee's unable to speak at the moment. Slowly chewing on that taquito fajita thing. Tasty though. Speaking of food at baseball fields, I heard the Royals upgraded their menu. Got I did not know that. Macaroni hot dog, I believe. A little bacon. I don't know how I feel about that. Spread on that. I do not know how I feel about that, but if I ever get to go to a Royals game, I guess we just another another reason to go to the K. Definitely. Dollar dogs at the K can't beat it. 
And now number 24, Eli Henderson is up to bat for the Bears. Got a home run in the first inning. Last inning did not get on base. So let's see what he can do this time around. Nice hit up the middle, filled by a shortstop Jack DeGarmo, throws it across and gets him out at first. So once again, Henderson with quick wheels up the line, just like last time, but got him out. It's because he devoured that thing without breathing. Number 11, Damon Montez is up to bat. He's their designated hitter for the William Christman Bears. So, should be expecting a good hit out of him. And once again, foul ball, making it a 0-2 count. Just nicked it. And found that off to keep him alive, making the count one, two. And strike three. And that would be the second out of the inning for the Eagles. So now up for the Bears, number six, Grady Ogle. Eagles cruising right now. Two outs, zero people on base. Top of the fifth. That is right, and that'll be a foul ball back to the backstop. Agapeno seems to seems to have found his rhythm. Excuse me. That uh, is right. He was looking a little slow at the start, but he's definitely come back these past two innings. Pitched some a great ball, and uh, we'll give him a strike to make the count. Oh, two. Taking some time to pitch, making sure he wants to make the right call here as an 0-2 count. You don't want to give him anything too easy. And he's going to swing, foul it off, and Velasquez with a great run, but just over the fence. This is a beautiful night here out on the Liberty North Field underneath the lights with a beautiful sunset back. If you can see in the clouds on, behind the field. Thank you for the nice depiction of the setting, Kaylee. Absolutely. Set. And number six is still up to bat. Speaking of the setting, we got a nice crew tonight, directed by Sarah Philpot, graphics by Riley Knoll, replay Ripley by Nold, did I say excuse Riley? Me. Excuse me, Ripley Knoll, replay by Chandler Saruji, cameraman. We got my boy Willie Burke, my boy Brock, Sean Strudent. 
Excuse me if I chop that last name, Sean. You're a great singer. Mitchell Neth. Announcers, of course. Next to uh, Miss Kaylee Knudsen. And next to Mr. Alexander Trinidad. And myself. Here to make a nice, beautiful night, like Kaylee said, with the sunset dropping. Good baseball game tonight. Absolutely. Eagles up three runs on the Bears after coming down from a 4-0 deficit. Seven consecutive runs here at the bottom of the fifth. bat for the Eagles here to kick off the bottom of the fifth inning. Nice little shot to the right field here. Puts Fuller on first base. In the bullpen, warming up for the Eagles, James Perry, sophomore James Perry, excellent athlete. Number 18 for the Eagles, making a nice steal to second base. Good read there. Yeah, nice steal by that was Parker Sims out there running. So up to bat is number 14, Josh Weekle, and he gets a line drive to right field. They're going to send Sims home, and he is safe, making the score 8 to 4, leaving Winkle on first. Yes, indeed, Kaylee, that was a nice little hit there. Luckily, it kicked off the collar, it gave him a nice couple. Did give him a little extra time. Leeway there, run through. And now up to bat for the Eagles is number 12, Kyle Belowski. Oh, look at him. I have something to say. I don't. They are. These before I put them on, be sure. Oh, this is chocos. It's like hot. It's more my legs that are cold, honestly. Actually. So the count now, a one and one count against Belowski. 
Lisa Winkle on first base, looking to advance the runner. No outs here in the bottom of the fifth. And that will be a foul ball on the first base side, caught by the first baseman. That will be the first out for the Eagles. And now up to bat will be number five, Logan McCune. <laughs> Said ball there on the first pitch. Ask me something unrelated to baseball. Let's just talk about something. And looking to pick him off, but got him back. And it is a late game for the Eagles tonight. And we have prom tomorrow night. Speaking of prom, I actually have to go set up prom tonight at about 10 o'clock till one o'clock. Wow. Crazy hours, yeah, I got a little gig. My buddy, Devin Davis, his aunt runs the company down there that sets up events at the view at Briarcliff. So hmm. I'm fortunate enough to go set it up the Get to go like help it floor. out, get to kind of see what it's gonna be like before tomorrow night. Exactly. So, so yeah, that will be fun, I'll be a busy night. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. getting all their hair and makeup done. I know a lot of people went and get their nails done tonight. Yeah, you can feel it in the air, that's for sure. People are very excited. Spring fever, prom, end of the year, it's just, it's all coming to an end. It's kind of crazy. It's like we're going to see if who's our prom at king and queen. This could possibly be the last game that Kaylee and I announced for this KLPS. Very could possibly be. Now I kind of want to cry. A little sad here. Said, but we do have a couple more innings here to finish this out. And now that is number two, Robbie Hanson, up to bat as Logan McCune got on first. So the Eagles only having one out here. Runners on first and second base. And the count now is 2-1. Robbie Hansen up to bat here for the Eagles. 2-1, and one, one out. Bottom of the sixth. As he steps away. It is definitely getting chilly out here. And that is a nice hit up the middle center field. And they're going to send Winkle home, and he is going to be safe. McCune taking third. Hansen taking second. A double there for sophomore Robbie Hansen as he hits a stinger up center field. One hop catch by the center fielder sends it home and advances Robbie to second and McCune to third. Now in scoring position here for the Eagles to Sorry. increase it to make it to double digits, increase it to a six point lead possibly. So this game has definitely hit a turning point since the bottom of that third inning. When the tide has turned. Tides have turned, Alex. Tides have turned, if I had to say so myself, Kaylee. Eagles nine. Nine, that's a great number. So the Eagles no should be feeling. In Spanish for all of our diverse viewers. <laughs> and that's going to be a hit of the middle field by a shortstop. And nice snag by first baseman Grady Ogle over there. And the Eagles are going to score. Two runs, I believe. McCune and Hansen both to home plate. We hit the double digits. Hit the double digits. Now, if I do my math correctly, a seven point lead. Yes. Eagles with 
11 consecutive run. That's just hard to fathom here as they were down 4-0. to zero. It's just hard to believe that the Bears ultimately collapsed so quickly. I mean, the, the Eagles definitely just got a few hits. They made a few errors, a few mental errors, start getting their heads, and then the momentum shifts in the Eagles' favor. Absolutely. It's just you may get a little comfortable with a 4-0 four, four lead pretty early on, you know, get into your groove, then the Eagles flip the switch, and they show, hey, this is our home field, and we may be a little lower in conference right now, but we're not done fighting. So once, like we said, I said this is a – important game for the Eagles to get as they are at home at conference they need a conference win tonight to have a chance at conference winning it is that true very true point there Kaylee it's always it's always good for the confidence to get to get a win but especially good for the heart when you get a win in conference very tough to win in conference you know Eagles playing a very tough conference today and they I mean the Eagles will face the Bears later on this season. And so having this win underneath their belt will benefit them moving on as they face will face them again on May 9th at William Christman. So they'll get to see them there again. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? So now up to bat for the Eagles, number three, Douglas Wood. Two outs, bases empty, Eagles leaving, leading 11-4. Wood up to bat for the Liberty North Eagles. That is correct. So he's had a couple nice hits this game, helped get this rally going for the Eagles. And let's see if he can continue that as the Bears are struggling. That'll be a strike on Wood, making a count three and one. So, having a pitcher strike right there, and he is going to walk on down to first base. Freebie there. That is a, another freebie given by the Bears, which is not helping their case. As, as now, number 15, Carl Alcapendo, is taking his. Can't be happy as as the Bears pitched so well. Couldn't even the Eagles couldn't even touch a ball. Couldn't buy a hit. Now it just seems like everything turned and they don't they don't mind the pitching for the Bears. So yeah, this is their third pitcher the Eagles have seen tonight, and they have just kept kept adjusting as Tyler Woodward is still is on the mound for the Bears. Gonna throw it down, try and pick him up, and not gonna work. Wood gets back with plenty of time. And I'll be a ground ball shortstop, and he holds it. Try, look to get that play at second, but what? Wood was too quick, so that puts Ocapeno on first base. And number 16, James Perry up to bat. Let me see how So good. <laughs> James Perry at the bat for the Liberty North Eagles. Already cranked a couple good ones. Was warming up in the bullpen. Don't know if we will see him tonight or not at the mound. As Acapeno has picked up his game, hasn't 
Let it run in since the second? Since Dang. the third. third. Top of the third. Top yeah, it's the, the last third. time the Bears have scored a run. And this, these last two innings have been long at bats for the Eagles. So. And that'll be a ball, making a count two and one. Runners on first and second base after a walk and a nice hit to shortstop. Indeed. It's a 3-2 count on Perry here in the bottom of the fifth. Woodward, and he's going to foul that off to the backstop. Runners looking to run on any hit with two outs. going he's gonna hit a high one to deep and the short stops got it so that'll be the third out for the Eagles here in the bottom of the fifth as we head into the sixth Perry pops one up there so definitely was not happy about that hit as he had runners on base but I can make it up here on the field And now, North Nation Sports Game of the Week is produced in part by Niles Media Group, supporting educational broadcast excellence in our community. As well, North Nation Sports Game of the Week is brought to you by Hawthorne Bank, serving communities all over the Northland and in Liberty at 5 Victory Lane. So thank you to Hawthorne Bank and Niles Media Group for helping us produce these Game of the Week. We wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. Yeah, thank you, Niles and Mr. Sprugal, for always helping our broadcasting program excel and strive to be so, the great. Yes, shout out to Mr. Sprugal if he is watching this. As well as shout out to our one and only Jeff Nold for helping us work everything because we would not be able to put all this equipment up or run anything without his wonderful assistance. Very true. Jeff Nold is the man. Handyman and everything. Knows what he's doing. <laughs> Love ya. Love Jeff. He said love you guys too. So now here for the Eagles, Acropenzo still pitching and up to bat is number four, Will Fisher for the Bears who gets a nice hit to right field and is caught by Logan McCune. That'll be the first out for the Bears at the top of the sixth. So, next up for the Bears will be number 10, Tyler Woodward. Strike there, called on Woodward as making the count one and one with one out. So the Eagles still keeping the lead 11 4. And second strike there. Good pitch there, Baca. Man, it had some movement on it. That one definitely did. He has definitely improved as the game has went on. Definitely adjusted. And there it goes. Strike three, getting the second out. 
for the Eagles. So that definitely builds a pitcher's confidence there. And as they head in, William Christman, uh, number 18, Jacob Farrell is up to bat. Strike one called against Farrell. there for Farrell. And another foul ball back to the backstop. middle and fumbled off of Jack DeGarmo so Farrell will take first base and now up to bat for the one Christian Bears is number one Sam Wimmerly. Nice windy night, nice cool 69 degrees here tonight. 11 to 4, the Eagles lead the Bears. Two outs, count is 1 0. Uh, nice loud motorcycle driving by, and that is a strike. Make a count strike. 1 2. two. And that'll be strike three on number one, third out for the Eagles as we head into the bottom of the sixth. So nice quick inning there. Once again, great pitching by Acapento. And the Eagles still lead 11-4. down the last couple of innings here. Kaylee, how do you think Coach Siegel feels about the way his teams came back? 
said, I mean, as any coach, I mean, he'd obviously be proud. I don't think he ever doubted them any. I mean, it was so early that he knows this team can come back. If they perform the way they can, they can handle any team, I think. And Coach Siegel knows that. And he's a great coach, does great things for the Liberty North men's baseball team. And I'm sure he's proud of how they've performed. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. It just shows the the depth of the team and just the perseverance they had pushing through the the 0 to 4 start to the Bears, making 11 consecutive runs and trying to add some more here at the bottom of the six. And, and up to the bat for the Eels is number 23, Nick Fuller. And has a 2-0 count to start off the bottom of the sixth. Nice uh, line drive up the middle to center fielder and Fuller on first base. And he is gonna have a pinch runner and number 10, Parker Sims. Number 18, Parker Sims. Number 18, I apologize, Parker Sims run for him. Thanks, Al. Of course, KK. And that's going to be a ball in the dirt. And Ryan's going to take second. Said, uh, coming from a catcher, I know I hate when those happen. So I try and block them, and they just get away from you. And there's nothing you can do about it, especially when there's a runner on. That Absolutely. That is definitely the worst. It's a tough one. So. And it's going to throw cross and number 14, Josh Winkle is going to get out, but advance Sims to third base. Next up for Liberty North is number 12, Cal Blaski. Looking to advance Sims, which is on third and a good scoring position here. Matt Blaski fouls it off. Two and one. Count. And once again, ball in the dirt, but Sims will hold up at third. Did not get away from him enough. Blaski avoiding contact with the ball. Possibly it's getting a little chilly here. Not gonna lie, fairly cold. It is very chilly. Alex put on his very, very cute golf sweats. He's definitely proud to strut around in those. Yeah, I had to, I had to tone it down a little bit with my style, you know, because tomorrow night <laughs> the suit's going to turn it up a little bit, not going to lie. Got to have an even balance. Got to have an even balance. But right now I am rocking the Navy fit as Kaylee is breaking the rule, though. Black on Navy, just saying. Said It's cold. You got to do what you got to do. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying right here with these nice 80s style looking pants. Said just like the, how the Eagles are doing what they got to do and... Pulling out this win, keeping the lead 
And up to bat for the Eagles is number five, Logan McCune. Eagles trending in the right direction after the last couple of, of at bats. Three runs, four runs, and four runs in the, in the past three innings, which is ultimately the game changer here. It really got away from the Bears after a hot start. Now just a little out of their grasp here as we come down to the last couple of innings here. Absolutely, and we're gonna see if Logan McCune can get this run in and I'll be called a strike on him, making the count one and two. And swinging and miss for a third strike. Making two outs for the Eagles as number two, Robbie Hansen, is up to bat. And once again, another ball in the dirt. Nice block by a catcher, number 18, Jacob Farrell. And another ball in the dirt, and once again, another nice block, holding up Sims on third. Number 12, Balowski on second. Runners both in scoring position for the Eagles, as number two, Robbie Hansen, is up to bat. The Eagles only have one out as well. Two outs. Two outs, excuse me, the graphic is wrong. Come on, Ripley. Gotta fix those graphics. Base will be loaded here for the Eagles. That is right. As we head back to the top of the lineup with number 10, Jack DeGarmo. Would it be something? Grand slam right here. I'm feeling it. Said I, that would be, I have not seen that in the Eagles high school games. I. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. So, I mean, it's definitely an opportunity. Two outs. Wind's blowing. If he hits it right, it could go. And high pitch coming in for our first ball. And a ball to the backstop, and Sims is going to come across the score, taking the, the lead up to 12 to 4. Parker so, Sims pinch running there. Yeah. Nice couple runs he's had today. And now we have Belowski on third, and Hansen on second with DeGarmo at the bat. Nice eight point. Lead and here. another ball in the dirt, but he keeps it in front as the Garmo walks, making the bases loaded once again. 
Said, Bases are loaded once again here for the Eagles. And okay. as the Bears are all yelling on the field, we just got to get one out. Said, and they're exactly right. I mean, one out will get them out of this pickle, but. Got a hashtag Grand Slam watch. Uh, Said, so we'll see. Number three, Douglas Wood up to bat. We'll see what he can do. And just outside, nice hold by Wood with the count one and one. Indeed. That is the count, Kaylee. Just doing my job. Doing it well. Fine job. And once again, another ball to the backstop. And Blouse is going to go in and score another run for the Eagles, advancing Hanson the third and DeGarmo to second. It is just a repetitive movement. Slot? Yeah. That might be the correct word. Said. Pass for some innings. Yeah, the same thing just keeps happening for the Eagles. And I mean, it's working for them. Taking the lead, 13 to four. And now up to bat is number 15, Carl Acapinto. If you could just see the, the psyche of the players. Or excuse me, number change. three, Douglas Wood, I apologize. Everyone just seems a little more relaxed. Definitely, and that is a hit to third base, throwing across, and he is off on his throw. So Wood will be safe on third scoring. And that is a game. Run spread 14 to four. Spread the Bears by 10 runs, ending the game early. Wow, I would have never saw this coming up at the start of this game. You know, Kaylee, I feel the exact same way. No but way. I'm shocked. It's just like waking up and out of a crazy nap and you don't know where you're at. That's, that's what I feel like right now. You know, they were down by four. And now it's 14 to 4. Like, hello, Eagles. The game's over. Knocking on the door of Victory Lane here at the bottom of the six, ending the game early. Crazy night here. Eagles have shown promise in getting a conference win, which is huge for them. Improving their conference record 2 to 4. And so now, oh, hi, guys. So we at this time want to thank. Um, North Nation Sports Game of the Week, which is produced in part by Niles Media Group, supporting educational broadcast excellence in our community as well. North Nation Sports Network is proud to work with the Eagle Club. Parents, if you're looking to get involved at Liberty North, this is a great way because the Eagle Club offers many opportunities. So, Absolutely. what do you have? Any? What's your highlights of the game, Alex? Highlights of the game. You know, I'm a little disappointed right now. Um, I didn't see my grand slam that I wanted. Still never seen. Didn't one. see it. But highlight to the game, you know, just the atmosphere in general, the way it turned around so quick after being down, you know, four to zero, like I said many times, and you know the way the Eagles stuck with their game plan it was just—it's kind of cool to see them work work through the ruts of. Uh, of the game and ultimately coming out with a nice what? victory there. So yeah, my, definitely that bottom of that third inning, Eagles down, picked up the runs. The Bears did not score after that third inning. That is pretty impressive. Great pitching by Carl Capento. Came back, did his job, and the Eagles really performed and stepped up to the plate. Yeah, I mean, if you would have told me the score was 14 to four at the end of the game, I would have maybe put Bears 14, Eagles four by the way the game started off. and. All in all, it was just a good win for the Eagles, good for their confidence, good for the rest of the season since it was a conference victory. Absolutely. And like we said, the Eagles now improve their record to in conference 2-4, to four, in season record 9-8. to eight. And so they have a winning record now. And so uh, this... Sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. Quick question here. How does this, you know, victory in conference, improving conference, you know, coming down from a deficit like that, give you momentum, you know, towards the rest of the season and just your outlook on the Said, season? This, I mean, this is this is a huge win. Definitely gives them mo um, mo movement, gives them momentum. So going into a tournament next week, and so 
I think they have a really great shot next week. And so we want to thank you guys for all watching. This has been your game. Congrats to the Eagles winning 14 to 4 against the William Christman Bears. And thanks for tuning in. This has been your North Nation Sports Network for yeah, tonight. Possibly. Kaylee and I's last last time announcing. Yes, it's been great announcing with you, Alex. Same, Kaylee. So, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks, thanks for watching. On the other side.